It's gonna allow you more flexibility in your editing. It's gonna provide more context for your viewer to understand what's happening and why they're looking at the singer, why are they watching this thing. And ultimately, I think it makes a much more engaging, professional looking video at the end of the day because you're not just stuck with a person on camera or one thing just being shown all the time. Honestly, video is a visual medium. Help people out by showing them what you know. Hey everybody, welcome to the Video Workflow Podcast, part of the Visual Lounge. We're so glad you're here. You might notice off the bat, if you're watching this, something looks a little bit different. There's only two of us today. In the world, the way it works is sometimes people find these really awesome opportunities they can't say no to. And we wanna wish Justin Simon the very best in his next opportunity. We're grateful for the opportunity to have worked with Justin, all he's contributed to this show, uh, to your knowledge, and it's been, Andy, I don't know about you, but I think it's been super fun to watch Justin's progression as he's oh learned gosh. more and more about video. Yeah, it, I was gonna say, I know I've learned so much from Justin and he would say he's learned so much from us. He's, he's changed backgrounds, he's changed lighting, he's, he's changed the way he approaches these things and uh, I'm sure it's just gonna get better and better. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to see what comes next for him. So today, Andy, though, we're gonna be talking about the thing that people hear, I think they hear the term, but maybe they don't always know what it is. It is B-roll. So Andy, you've worked with a lot more video than I have. Uh, I'm hoping you have a really good way to explain what B-roll is. Yeah, you know, National Geographic often has videos of bees. No, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> really, B-roll <laughs> comes from the simple term, I mean, you could call it two-roll, but it doesn't sound as good, right? It's not the main role. It's not your A-roll, it's your B-roll, meaning roll of film or footage. So basically now we think of it as secondary footage. Uh, your B-roll isn't your main person speaking into the camera. It's the supplemental footage that comes. You know, if you're watching a news program at night and the speaker's talking about the town council meeting that happened and you continue to hear their voice talking about the town council meeting but then see footage of it, that footage is your B-roll. So that is B-roll. It's supplemental uh, and usually, uh, usually it should be about whatever the speaker is talking about. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you definitely hope so, right? Like, yeah, uh, and I think chaos. It's, it's just chaos. No one knows what you're actually looking at because those things match together. And this is what we want to talk about is why, why is this so important? I think we can talk about maybe where some places are if, you, you know, if you're unsure of what to use for B-roll. But let's, let's talk about a little bit more about uh, you know, why, why this is so important, what it can really do for video. Because I feel like it feels almost in some ways like it's an afterthought. Like, oh, I've got the footage, I've got the person speaking, I've got this, but, but it's not an afterthought. It is much, much more than that. It is, uh, you know, the thing that's gonna, it can really change the flavor or dynamic of whatever you're producing. So uh, yeah. let's, let's chat about that a little bit, Andy, because I know yeah. like for, for, I'm sure for, you know, we'll hear a wedding story or we'll hear, we'll hear something else, but like how, how have you seen B-roll change your videos? Yeah, I mean, well, gosh, obviously I could start with weddings, but now that you've said that, I'm coming back to weddings. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, even here, if you're, if you're talking about a, a meeting share out, right? We've got something we want to share with the department uh, and we want to, it is so much less interesting for me to just talk to the camera and you to stare at my face the whole time. So screen recording can be B-roll, you know? So if I'm recording a screen and showing you how to log into our payroll site or showing you how to, you know, I was gonna say record your screen, but that would get real meta, don't do that. Uh, but you can, you can show someone how to, you know, execute a process. Um, I would rather see it than hear about it and stare at someone's face. I think, you know, we forget that video is, well, I hope we don't forget, is a very visual medium. And so show, don't tell. Um, if you're gonna talk about it, show it. Um, so, so yeah, screen recording for me is a big one, especially here uh, at TechSmith. We obviously focus on screen recording a ton um, and we use it sometime as the A-roll as well. If you don't wanna be on camera, that screen recording can be your main footage, uh, your narration and your screen recording. Boom, you've got yourself a video. Um, I would almost say, Andy, that I think for a lot of what we do, uh, screencast, the screencast itself is the main footage, but I, I like what yeah. you said that it's, it's providing that kind of additional context or different uh, additional information. And, and I suspect if you're teaching someone how to log into a system, that's a role, right? You're going to teach them, you're going to show right. them the steps, click here, do this, do that. But if you're just talking about like, Hey, we're really excited. We're going to roll out this new program or new system. 
Yeah. Show the system. Don't just tell Absolutely. me about it. Show it. Give me reasons to get excited. Be like, oh, cool. What what's in there? Is this does this look complicated? Does it look easy? What what is it that you can help me understand when you're not necessarily teaching me about it? You're just trying to get me to know what what is this new tool? What does it look like? So that when I go to see it, when it's you're gonna teach me about it, I'm not left completely out in the dark. That's a solid point. Yeah, especially see, this is why you're the you're the tutorial expert, clearly, because you're right. If for for screen recording in that instance, I guess that would not be that would not be B-roll if it's your main footage. But if I just want to talk about a website that I learned something off of, and I you know, hey, I'm I'm doing my thumbnails over here on Canva. You can just go over to Canva, and you just show the main page and maybe do kind of a quick zoom in or something. But I'm not teaching you how to do anything with it. That's not my main footage. That would be a better example of B-roll. Uh, and now I'm going to jump over to a wedding story, but not because you told me to. Uh, so <laughs> I think with, with weddings, you know, if I was doing uh, footage of the ceremony, and I, I would put together a short film after the wedding. They're not watching the entire thing uh, in one sitting. I would give them that as well. But I would just do like a short, you know, three to four minute trailer maybe. Um, and I want to capture audio of their vows or audio of one of the toasts. Uh, and I obviously am going to show the person giving the toast or, you know, uh, say, speaking their vows. But we don't want to watch that the whole time. So we put in some B-roll. We have clips of the audience responding to them or reacting to it. We show clips of their wedding rings. We show clips of them getting ready in the morning and feeling that anxiety and that anxious feeling uh, as they prepare for this big day. Uh, and so B-roll can really not only not only supplement and kind of add context to, but it, it adds emotion sometimes. It adds um, this kind of like connection to what your speaker is talking about uh, and makes you feel a little more empathetic to their point. Yeah. So I, one thing, uh, I, I, we're, we're going to be launching a course eventually. I don't want to give out too many details because it's not ready yet, but thinking about those moments of impact in your video, right? And sometimes like us even here talking on cameras is uh, it's fine, but you know, maybe this is a point where we just, hey, can we shove in some B-roll of you talking yeah. some some wedding footage in there, go back sure. and put in some wedding, fo wedding footage, right? Like, I think looking for those moments that you can, you can enhance what's being shown is, or what's being talked about is really valuable. And I, I, I think it gets overlooked, especially in tutorial videos, because, you know, a lot of times you're just going through a process, boom, 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 right? Like with step by step, if it's that kind of tutorial, or if it's more of a training, you know, you think about, uh, you get some kind of your compliance training issues, uh, you know, the big ones, discrimination, uh, sexual harassment, you know, security policies. And, right. and those are big, broad topics. And it's like, sometimes you don't have anything that you need to show. Like you don't have a, a, an event, like click here, do this. It's like more like you're trying to maybe set the tone. And I think it's, it's so valuable. And, and if you go and I, I think maybe one of the assignments we could give everybody to do is go watch anything. I don't care what it is something yeah. on TV preferably, and go just look at how they use B-roll. Um, and I think we've got a couple other reasons why it's so important, but I think just look at how much it's set in context. You know, you're getting other information that you might not be getting from the visuals alone that just watching the main kind of actor or person on screen just will never provide. Like, it, right. you know, it will never provide the right amount of information about what's going on around them. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. So we talk about, you know, context. Um, but one of the other things is, and I'm trying to remember, I feel like it was Bob Pike who said it in one of our interviews uh, on the TechSmith Academy, but it was um, people's attention span, right, is, is only so uh, long or short, yeah. I guess. And so if you just continue with this long uh, face video, face video, face on screen video, you know, talking head, as we refer to it, for too long, you're going to lose people. Um, I mean, this this is also a podcast, obviously, so I know a lot of people are just listening and not watching. Um, but people who watch and don't see the, the cuts change between who the main presenter is during this conversation may get a little bored because they're like, all right, mix up the shots, change it, you know, keep me engaged. And so another thing that B-roll does is it keeps your audience engaged because it gives them something else to look at. It gives them something else to process and think about and, again, put context to. So even though you're putting context to, it's that engagement factor. Uh, that really keeps people watching because you've changed the shot. Uh, and I, Matt, you've even, I'm sure, got more specific numbers on this, not to put you on the spot, on like how often it is that a, that a shot changes on television. Yeah, I mean, mine was, uh, it, it's just me counting one episode of one show. And it was like, I couldn't ever get to like more than two seconds at the very most. And there was some kind right. of movement, right? And I think that's, to, you know, to going to what you said about what Bob Pike talked about is, 
he, he kind of talks about, you know, like this eight minute window that, but particularly from a learning perspective, like people can focus from a learning for retention kind of purpose for like eight minutes. And whether that's true or not, I think people, we give not, we don't give people enough credit for attention because it's not eight seconds. That's just a myth about their right. goldfish attention. That's, that's BS. <laughs> However, people do have, you know, you, you can only go so far before you need, you need to be mixing it up because otherwise people yeah. get, are going to drift, right? We've got a lot of pressures in our life. We've got a lot of things we got to do, a lot of emails, a lot of Slack notifications, and all that is going to be pulling on your viewer. And so you need to give them reasons to keep watching it. Now, and yep. you know, if, if you don't need to keep watching it, that's why you can do a pod, do a podcast, do an audio. You don't need to do the work of the video, but like you want, yep. you want to keep things moving. I mean, even something like in this show, just being able to switch back and forth between Andy right. is that it's a small thing and we're probably not doing it nearly enough to keep it as engaging as we could. But like, we also know kind of we're primarily going for, for, uh, you know, the, the pot, the audio. Right. Um, so, right. but I think, so you got to think about this, those kind of situations when it's going to make sense. I think just, you know, keep things moving though. I think Bob actually in that same video in an interview referenced like three to four seconds. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and is that a necessary? Right. No, I think you really need to know what you're going for. But if you have a 30 second video, it's supposed to be hard hitting promo fast. You know, mm -hmm. it need to change. It better change a lot. Like things better be yeah. going boom, 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 boom. If you're you're doing like an hour long webinar, mm -hmm. it's a video. You still want to keep things moving, but you have a I think a little bit more flexibility. But but you also then might be doing other things to engage your audience beyond just what's on screen. It's funny how that 30 seconds though you talk about like a 30 second promo if if it's fast paced if it's you know well edited it can feel like it just flies by but if it's one shot of one person doing what it drags it's amazing how the same amount of time can really change depending on how much we're you know taking in is it a ton of content is it a ton of imagery or is it one thing that really feels like it's just going on and on um, you, another wedding story, because here we are. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I remember the time that everything changed for me. It was like 2012, I think. I'd been doing weddings for three or four years already, and I did them for 10 total. And uh, I, I had sent this couple their trailer, and they loved it. They raved about it. They were posting it online and sharing it with friends, and I was getting all these wonderful compliments. It was so great. And a month or so later, I handed off their final, I think it was a Blu-ray disc at that time, which included their full ceremony, their full toasts, all the footage, a long, linear, chronological edit of their day. And I'm telling you, the final thing was probably a 45-minute video. And a few months passed, and I, I reached out to them because I hadn't heard. They'd said they got it. And I said, hey, did you ever have a chance to watch that? What would you think? And they said, actually, you know what? We're saving it for our anniversary. We're really looking forward to watching it. Okay, hold on. You're really looking forward to watching it a year from now? Like, like that tells me once they saw the runtime, because they did say they put it in and started it and then decided they'd come back to it and save it. And I'm like, they probably saw that it was 45 minutes long. And this is the most important day of their life at this point. And they decided to put it off because it's a little too much. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got to watch the, the, you got, yeah, just gotta, you gotta build for the right circumstances and the right length. And, uh, yeah. and obviously you can put a lot of B roll in a 45 minute video too, right? We watch movies that are hours long, they have, yeah. but they have a lot of B roll, a lot of changes, a lot of things. That's why, you know, two hour long movies can have multiple kind of subplots and things like that because they can, they, right. and they do that. So they keep you involved because one yeah. story is not going to last that long necessarily. And, and a movie's not always necessarily B roll. It's more like shot to shot. You know, it's, it's, take versus take mm -hmm. and, and angle versus angle and, and different uh, uh, elements of um, frame size and aspect. But it's really the, the B-roll, if we're talking about videos, if we're talking about interviews or product videos or things like that, uh, is where B-roll plays an important part. Um, but man, in a 45 minute wedding video, there's only so much B-roll to go around. Because <laughs> uh, it, it did, um, I think even I remember watching it and going, all right, it's a little long, uh, even with B-roll in place. so. It was, I think I would leave clips on too long. There's, there's a sweet spot. And the rule I taught myself was if I'm bored, they'll probably be bored. You should be, you know, you, not everything we make is going to be Spielberg or Scorsese. Like not everything we make is going to be so engaging that everyone is riveted. But are you boring yourself? <laughs> like, are you right. the content creator tired of watching this thing that you're making? Maybe it needs a little, uh, little something extra. Maybe it needs some B-roll here, or maybe it needs to be shortened. Um, it could be a number of things. And that's, that's another thing that I use B-roll for, um, shortening my edits. If I've got a great interview, 
Um, but maybe, you know, the beginning was great. And then there's this section like four minutes in I love. And then right at the end, they really hit on the topic. And I just want those pieces with none of the other middle sections. Putting a clip of B-roll over those edits makes it feel seamless. It makes it feel like I didn't cut anything out of the interview. The person was talking about A, B, and C. They don't know that it's actually A, G, and, you know, L. <laughs> that the points are all over the board. So um, I think really B-roll can be used to kind of build a better edit too. Well, I, I was just going to say that I remember when I figured out that's what, what people were doing and how that's like, because I was like, how, how do they cover up their mistakes that they made? Because I make mistakes yeah. all the time. Like we probably <laughs> yes. should can put, can we put B-roll on the mistake I just made on that switching? We'll just fill it in. <laughs> yep, there it uh, is. You know, Again. like, but when I remember when I felt I, I was in awe of learning that, like, oh my gosh, you, it's okay. This is how you put two different takes taken at different times together, right? Like you can use, yeah. I mean, you could do, do different angles. There's lots of ways to do it, but B-roll is one of the ways for the types of work that I do that makes a lot of sense. Like it's a lot of on camera, a lot of delivery to camera, you know, like you're going to have to say things two or three times to get it right. As Andy's heard yeah. me deliver those things before and make mistakes. Like I, I'm going to need some B roll there, you know, and there's <laughs> other things you can do, but B roll is such a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing yeah. to do that. So Andy, real quick, before we go on to kind of our, our final points and whatever, I do want to say, if you're listening to the podcast, you're watching it on YouTube or wherever you get your, you know, l listening, viewing opportunities with the visual lounge. Here's the thing we'd like you to do. If you've learned something today, even if upcoming or something we just talked about, go ahead and share it. We'd love to have you share it out on your social media platforms. Tag yes. uh, TechSmith, tag Andy, tag me, because we want to know that it's being helpful. And we'd love to respond to that, answer any questions and help you guys uh, maybe boost, promote your post a little bit to get, it, get the word out. But thank you guys Absolutely. for listening and tuning in. And you can always like, subscribe, do all that good stuff because that helps us too to know that we're providing value in your kind of day-to-day, -day, may I say, workflow. So video yeah. workflow, hopefully. <laughs> so. so Andy, okay, we've talked about, you know, you can cover your mistakes, it adds context, B-roll's got all of these things. Is there, is there anything else that we would want to say about B-roll before we wrap up today? Uh, just, I mean, we mentioned this too. It's also, you know, it creates better engagement, right? So we've got the three main points. It's covering edits, uh, building better context and keeps your video more engaging. There's there's more we can say about it, I'm sure. For me, video uh, doesn't exist without B-roll. When I was when I was learning in college, that was a major part of every project um, because any character you know who who takes an action, maybe someone throws a basketball. Does that just go off camera and the basketball is gone now, or do we get to see where it goes and bounce, or do we get to see it go into the net? So um, yeah, B-roll is part of filmmaking it's part of video creation and it can be created part of creating course content uh so anything you can do to kind of make a better experience for your viewer it's just gonna make your video that much better yeah so one thing i think we should is worth mentioning here is i think uh i know for a long time it was really hard like i had to go make my own b-roll right like i was gonna be shooting something with a camera mm, yeah. therefore i had to make sure i captured b-roll and still a good idea Obviously with screencasting, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different because you can record your screen. But the thing that I love oh, about B-roll, it is so much easier nowadays to get good B-roll. And you know, there's yeah. lots of places where you can find some free stuff. Always be careful, look at your licensing. Don't, don't just assume you can use something because it's on the internet. Uh, but a, a couple of places, I, I've got a couple of places I can recommend, Andy, if you've got any. So obviously we'd start TechSmith, the, the Camtasia uh, library or TechSmith Assets Library. So, you know, there's there's free assets out there, video, images, and you could use both, right? Like that's the other thing here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be video, it could be an image. You could do what they uh, call the Ken Burns effect where you're kind of zooming in or panning across an image. Um, I know Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com uh, has some free resources. Uh, and there's, I, I'm sure there's other ones out there that provide video that you know you'd watch again watch usage make sure you can legally use it for whatever you're using it for watch copyright things like that but andy do you have any recommendations for for getting good b-roll yeah i i mean there's a few obviously uh i i think you already mentioned maybe you did, uh, the TechSmith library um mm -hmm. you know the asset library is the the place to start but also um gosh there's all sorts of levels of pricing too, right? So like Envato.com, uh, E-N-V-A-T-O, and I'm trying to remember their specific video site. Is it Video Hive? I think Video Hive might be the name of it. But um, We can anyway, always link to it in the show notes. <laughs> there you go. If you go to Envato.com, they'll get you there too. 
Uh, and then there's also, of course, Adobe stock. Uh, anyone using Adobe products uh, may have access to it. I forget how the licensing works, but you'll probably have to purchase your Adobe after that. Um, and then there's things like Getty images, but Getty is probably going to be more expensive again. So, uh, yeah, there's none are, of course, coming to mind immediately because I, I loved where you're going with this. Suddenly I was like, oh, yeah, you don't have to shoot your own B-roll. That's right. Stock footage is great. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, our, our editor, Katie, uh, showed a shot to me the, for a video she's working on right now. And I was like, oh, where'd you get that B-roll? She actually shot it herself. I thought she had stock footage purchased. <laughs> and she was like, no, I just went and shot the thing. So I was like, well, you need to submit that to Getty Images. You go ahead and get yourself a little <laughs> side. But yeah, so um, uh, off topic. But yes, the, there's plenty of places you can get stock footage from. And that is a great idea when you uh, don't have the ability to just go out and film some. Yeah, and I'll just add, you know, we talked a lot about video. We talked about screencasting. I think, again, I want to emphasize images. I want to, you know, it could be animations. It could be, you know, there's lots of ways that you can you can kind of fill some of those gaps, cover those mistakes. Just be, just be thoughtful. Does it fit? Does it make sense? Is it adding value to the understanding of whatever it is that you're producing? And I, th I think that's, that's huge, right? B-roll is really mm -hmm. important piece of that. Um, and I think my I favorite, though, is cover my mistakes because I that's what yeah. I need help with. <laughs> Absolutely, it is, and it's I'm I'm glad we got to that one. I nearly forgot that, but that's I mean that's how I started using B-roll, and that's to this day, of course, B-roll is great, and not just mistakes, right? Maybe like I said, we just want to shorten a piece here, but if I cut it, it's going to be obvious that it jumps from here to here, and it's going to so cover it with B-roll. Um, gosh, whatever I was about to say just fell out of my head because you're right, covering mistakes is a great use for it. No, no, no worries. So here's, I think we're, we're, we're close to time. You know, we want to thank everyone for tuning in, listening. We, we so tuning in. That's a phrase we still use these days. For yeah. The yeah. Kids. That's real. Tune in the dial. Uh, <laughs> we're so appreciative for everybody who listens. And again, if you, you, you've got something you learned today, make sure you hit us up on social media. We'd love to hear that. Uh, and of course, feel free to email us with any questions, suggestions, or thoughts about the show. You can email us at the visual lounge at techsmith.com. So, Andy, let's go dive into our final thoughts for the show. Uh, you want to start? I'll start us off, sure. Uh, B-roll is a crucial part of video making. It keeps your audience engaged. It keeps them aware of what you're talking about. And honestly, video is a visual medium. Help people out by showing them what you know. Love yeah. it. Lo love it. It's gonna be hard to top. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do I say after that? I, I think the thing I'll say for final thought about B-roll is if you're not familiar, go watch, go look at what other people are doing and start incorporating it into your videos today because you're going to find that it's going to allow you more flexibility in your editing. It's going to provide more context for your viewer to understand what's happening and why they're looking at the singer. Why are they watching the sing? And ultimately I think it makes a much more engaging professional looking video at the end of the day, because you're not just stuck with a person on camera or one thing just being shown all the time. And with that said, you can overdo it. So don't, Go! Don't let the pendulum swing completely the other way where you're doing so much B-roll that you forget about the main subject as well. Well, with that said, thanks again, everybody. We will be back with another episode soon and we'll talk to you all later. Thanks.